Hello everyone and welcome to another Howlu Sees It review. Today I am reviewing Hoyuk, a game by Pierre Canuel and uh, published by the Mage Company. And uh, I did a interview a while back with the game's designer uh, and uh, someone from the Mage Company and uh, I'll post a link to that uh, as well in this video description. Uh, but let's go ahead and show you uh, Hoyuk and uh, look at the components, a little bit of the gameplay, and tell you my thoughts. Uh, this was uh, successfully backed on Kickstarter a while back, and uh, the production quality of this is fantastic. The uh, There is a expansion to Hayuk uh, uh, on Kickstarter right now. Uh, there's just a, a couple days left on that. Um, but this is really, uh, when it comes down to it, a really enjoyable game. Great production value quality on the components. Uh, very, very well uh, established gameplay. Um, a lot of interesting choices and it's it's really, really uh, good. I've enjoyed it a lot. Um, so let's go ahead and show you the components first. Um, pull out here, there's uh, this really nice big board. It's very large. Um, the artwork throughout the game is uh, very cool. I enjoy it quite a bit. And in the essence here, you'll see it's a, uh, a tile laying game. And so the artwork's really, really cool. But uh, really, it's just it's it provides uh, kind of that theme aspect to it. But you don't really interact with the board other than you'll see these slightly shaded boxes uh, against the lighter squares, and that's just so that you can uh, keep uh, the grid correctly as you're playing the game. Um, also, in the game, you will find uh, some of these long construction tiles, uh, little cardboard uh, construction tiles. Um, very nice finish on these and uh, you have like 15 of those. And then you'll have a bunch of these aspect cards. Um, you'll have also these uh, catastrophe cards. Um, you will have 25 of these house tiles in uh, five uh, different colors. Uh, you will have over here, you'll see uh, this is the ending of a, a two-player shortened game um, here shown. But uh, you have some shrine, white shrine tokens, some gray oven, uh, some gray oven tokens. And for the advanced game, uh, there's a, a basic game, a medium game, and an advanced game that you can play. And the advanced game utilizes these uh, brown cattle uh, tokens and these orange uh, villager tokens. Um, there's also a black uh, shaman token in here that you see there. So we have all sorts of tokens there. There's some more tiles uh, that represent pens. Um, and you'll see over here uh, some of the extras from either you know the different colors and for again I just did a real quick basic game just before starting this video as well so uh, we have a lot of extra components the there's rule books provided in three different languages uh, I believe French German and English um, the rule booklet here is really actually pretty good um, I really enjoyed the layout of the of it. Uh, you have a look at all the components there. Uh, you have the basic setup. Uh, it's a little bit uh, challenging to set the game up for the first time. Um, going back to the box here, um, you'll notice that uh, there isn't like a, an insert or anything to keep anything different. Uh, the only thing that came in the game is this one bag that I uh, use to hold all the components. Uh, so uh, 
other than separating everything out each time, you're going to have to provide your own baggies to keep the cards and all the tiles separately. If you don't, um, it's just going to shift around. It's going to be a big mess to try to separate everything out. Um, and I, it's probably like this for a few other games, but the game setup is actually a lot easier if you're playing the advanced game because you're going to be utilizing all of the tokens, all of the cards, all of the construction tiles, um, other than you know the other player uh, houses. Um, but in the basic game and the medium game, but the basic game you're going to have to remove you know a certain number of aspect cards and a certain number of catastrophe cards and a certain number of construction and so you have to kind of sort through and find those so it's kind of interesting that the basic game setup is going to be taking a little bit longer than the advanced game but the the layout and explanation is is, is pretty good there's lots of illustrations um, which I like a lot of do's and do nots very clear uh, there uh, the game, you know, you know, just kind of give you an overview of some of the gameplay uh, as we're going through the rule book as well. Is uh, each round you're going to play in round, and there's four phases in each round. Uh, you're going to do construction phase twice, uh, then you'll have catastrophes, uh, then you'll have uh, the aspect card phase, and then the end of round phase. So, just kind of flip through this, kind of show you the how well laid out it is, and lo again, lots of illustrations for the pages. Um, the catastrophes, um, if I pull one of these cards over here, um, one of the things that was a little bit diff difficult just starting out of the game is uh, getting used to some of the iconography. is is pretty pretty easy, but for example, here's one of the catastrophe cards. Um, you know, for the first time setting up for the basic game, you know, it doesn't tell you, show you which cards to pull out. It tells you the name of the card, and then you have to come back to this rule book and say, okay, uh, bad season number one is, and then it has this. The you know number one would be the block with the fewest number of shrines. Uh, each of those people in that block have to lose one house. But if you come over here, there's nothing that says it's bad season. So this is actually the locust one. Um, I don't think I have the bad season right there. But anyway, this is like the earthquake one. And while the pictures are pretty descriptive of that, um, it was it just made it a little bit difficult for that first time. But really, the iconography is pretty simple. Um, and honestly, after one play, um, it's very easy to, to understand what the iconography is. Uh, it's not really difficult once you get into it. It's just that initial phase was a little bit challenging. Um, in the aspect cards, so yeah, we'll get into the board and show you all that other stuff. But uh, it goes into more detail there, the end of the game, and then for the medium game, it's pretty simple. You're just going to add some more aspect cards and scoring, uh, well, yeah, more aspect spaces in how to get those. Uh, and the advanced game, you're going to add, you know, the shaman character. You're going to add more aspect cards, and then you're also going to add cattle and villagers to the mix as well. And that's going to add additional end game scoring as well to that. Uh, also, in the advanced game, you have the option to include these clan powers, uh, which actually provides basically each person uh, a special ability that if they turn in five aspect cards at once, uh, they're able to utilize their clan's special uh, power. They have a frequently asked question uh, section and an area for notes so if you have questions uh, look them up on board game geek or something or if you want to make house rules or something you can uh, keep track of those in here which is kind of cool um component wise the only thing that i'm a little disappointed in is is uh not having some sort of little reference cards um that uh, could have helped with 
uh, like the iconography or the clan powers, for example. I mean, that is an advanced game, but some two-sided cards with some uh, basic uh, kind of outline would have been, I think, helpful. There is on the board here, I will mention, there is on the board here kind of a reminder of uh, the how the round, you know, the four phases of the round, construction, the catastrophes, drawing aspect cards, and the end of the round to go through that. Um, kind of the victory point phase, uh, how that's done, but other than that, I, I think that there could have been some reference card, uh, which would have uh, been nice, other than having this book and figuring out the clan powers and all of those things, or what's that icon mean, and things like that could have been uh, helpful. As well as, again, going back to the box and insert to keep all the components or even baggies or something to help keep everything separate would have been nice as well. But other than that, the uh, the cardboard and everything on these, uh, a, a good thickness and good quality on these uh, tiles. And like I said, I, I really enjoy the artwork on these uh, all as well. So basic gameplay, um, you're going to each be dealt uh, one of these construction tiles and then starting with the first player there's also a first player uh, little uh, tile here to keep track of the first player um, we'll take this and then they will build these uh, three things that are shown so in this one you're going to build two of your houses and uh, one shrine so you get here um, blue here let's say like this so I can build a house there, build a house here, okay, and uh, then I can build a shrine on top of that, okay. And so some of the basic building things here is uh, you have to add, you know, this to one of your other uh, families, uh, which is represented by continuous uh, houses here. Uh, I wouldn't be able to just go build this on the other side uh, by its lonesome self over here on the other side of purple. Um, and it has to be attached to one of my other houses. Or I can go ahead and start a new city block, if you will, right there. That's also legal. Um, the other thing here, you'll notice uh, we have two different blocks. I would not be able to build here, which would connect those two. Um, other than that, you basically have the entire board. Uh, I mean, I can go place this completely all out of the way over there. Um, you're only limited by the border of the pretty large board here. Um, this is a shortened game, as I mentioned. Uh, there's 25 houses in, um, and so the game ends when someone's laid their 25th house. Uh, just played with my wife a short uh, version uh, where we just played with 15 uh, houses. So you can see there's quite a bit, a lot of room left uh, on the board for that. But uh, as you get into, you know, five players with 25 houses, that would be kind of hurting for space and you wouldn't be able to do a whole lot of legal moves. And so you, an option is to shorten it uh, with five players just for game length and for you know board layout I would probably play with 20 uh, houses um, to help with that but uh, anyway so that is another benefit of this game though as well is there's so much there's so much that you can vary in the game you can play the basic game with just those three scoring aspect cards there uh, well aspect uh, you have more th than three aspect cards, but three different ways to gain aspect cards. Or in the medium game, you can add more aspect cards and more ways to gain aspect cards. And then you have the advanced game. And you also can vary the length of the game by saying, okay, let's only do 15 houses, or let's do all 25, let's do 20. You just figure that out beforehand, and, and that's really kind of cool. I like that. Um, so construction phase, draw that tile, then the other person builds based off of that, 
and then you uh, both will draw aspect tile or construction tiles again. So this one, for example, two houses, and they all kind of have uh, two houses really, and then it's usually some other thing here. Um, either you have to build a shrine, or this one, see, so you can build a shrine or a pen. Uh, sometimes it's wild, basically, and you can build a house, another house, a pen, a shrine, or an oven, that sort of thing. Um, then, after that, after the building, you're building that there, and you're going to have a catastrophe. So what that happens is you draw one of these cards, and this is either going to be a shadow, kind of darker one and a lighter one, or just a shadow one. And if it's just a shadow, that would mean the block with the least number of shrines in this case. And in the case of this card that has both of those icons, the one uh, block with the most shrines uh, would end up uh, losing one house. So if you look at here, there's just two city blocks. Uh, this larger block has three shrines. That one has two. So we, this city block here has the most shrines, and each of us, purple and blue, would have to choose one house to destroy. And it uh, comes down to here, pretty easy decision uh, for uh, both people here. Um, we both kind of have houses that don't really have a shrine or anything or a pen. And uh, the only other thing that's interesting is you may want to look at is creating more families. So how you do that, like I said, you when you construct uh, a house, you have to place it adjacent to one of your houses already. I can't just put it over here. Um, and what it is is this block here has uh, basically four families. Purple has two families. So you have a family here and you have a family there. And blue has two families, one there and one here. So um, later on I'll explain, but as you gain aspect cards, you can only play uh, a number of aspect cards equal to the number of families you have. So one way to gain families, other than starting, like, say, a new block over here, because that would be another family, um, is to actually um, create another family with a catastrophe. You'll see there are a few houses destroyed of catastrophe, some ruins there already. But blue actually has three shrines and purple has no shrines on this so if I wanted another family an easy way to do that would be to actually destroy maybe this shrine since I already have majority which is how you're going to gain aspect cards I could actually destroy this I would lose my shrine unfortunately but I just created a new family and so now I have three families in this city block and with the three plus the family over there from that other city block, I could now play four different aspect cards um, each round. So um, it's kind of the catastrophes. I know I've read some other reviews and kind of people's feedback. You know, it's the the catastrophes can be very devastating. That one wasn't too bad because it was just uh, one house that you would lose. But this fire catastrophe, for example, uh, the city block with the most ovens, which again would be this, this giant block here, um, each person has to choose to lose half of their houses. And that's where some of the real difficult decision making uh, can come into play, it can be very devastating. Uh, so blue here would has you know one, two, three, four, five, six houses, so I have to choose three to destroy. So it comes to, well, do I want to destroy this that I just created to make another family? It doesn't have anything on it, but then I lose uh, that, you know, separate family that I have, so I can't play as many aspect cards. Um, but with all these other ones, it's I'd have to lose an oven or a shrine. And some somewhat difficult to see here, I'll get down to this, is you can build two-story houses. Um, it's pretty pretty easy to tell 
uh, on the board. It's kind of hard to show with uh, the camera, but you'll see this is a two-story, this is a two-story, and this is a two-story. Um, and so those kind of help break tie for majority. And uh, but they so they're pretty powerful. So if you lose one of those houses, uh, it's pretty devastating. So that going on to the aspect after you've destroyed houses, uh, then it basically comes to uh, gaining these different aspect cards. And you notice there's an oven, a shrine, and a pen. So whoever has the most ovens in a given block will gain the top card here. And whoever has the high, most shrines in a village or in a city block gains that and so forth. Um, so it's really kind of an interesting aspect there. Uh, so you come and the first player will choose which block to score first, which really can make a big difference um, because you're going to be looking for certain aspect cards over there. But you go ahead and see who has majority. If, for example, at the beginning of the game, uh, you may not have uh, anyone who has built uh, pens in that city block. If there are no pens, then you know no one scores that. Um, but anyway, so you're going to score for majorities. The two-story houses become important for tiebreak on that. And let's go ahead and just look at some of these aspect cards quickly. You'll notice the the main key to these aspect cards. I think it's kind of interesting. Um, the artwork's really cool on this and everything, but the main artwork that you see here. Uh, has no importance to the actual game itself. Uh, the only thing that you're really looking at here is this icon in the top left corner and this is just reference uh, reiterated on each card showing the scoring for aspect cards. So you can utilize these, you're gaining them, you can utilize them in twofold. Uh, you can utilize it in either to build what's shown in this top left corner. So I, with this I could turn this in at the beginning of one of the phases to build another house to add to the board. Uh, with this one here I can turn it in and uh, build a pen somewhere on the board. Um, so there's that way. Or if I have these three cards, you, what you're trying to do is collect sets. So for Every, if you look at the scoring here, if I have two of the pens, which I do, I could turn those in for three points. Um, all the way up to five, you would turn in, you have five of these, five of the, the pen, you would turn it in and get 12 points. Okay. There are a few wild cards in here, and then there's, you know, uh, and for like the basic game, you'll only have a certain number of these cards in advanced game, medium game, you'll add some in there. But So that's how you gain points throughout the game is collecting sets of these and turning them in. Um, then so let's say that I held, held on to these uh, for, you know, I'm going to collect and try to get points. Uh, but this house one, I really need to build the house. I'm going to actually build this at the uh, beginning of the end phase round. I'm going to utilize this card, build the house, then at the end of phase what you're going to do is all, any aspect cards either utilize to build or if I had turned these in for say three points, um, I'm going to take all of the aspect cards that I utilized that round, uh, make a little stack, and then I'm going to come over to here and I am going to choose one of these piles I'm going to place these cards underneath that pile. And this becomes an interesting choice too because if I have cards in here that I want to maybe see again um, and I want to continue gaining aspect cards for shrines because I have lots of shrines on the board I'm gonna want to maybe put these cards underneath the shrine one because one thing that happens is if all of the aspect cards get taken from a pile say the ovens uh, I'm not going to, no cards can be added to this. Basically, this scoring uh, and getting aspect cards, I mean, from the most ovens is gone. So if someone has the most ovens and they spent lots and lots of time getting majority of ovens and this runs out, 
they're out of luck for the remainder of the game because they're not going to be able to get any more aspect cards that way. So really, really interesting. And then basically you're going to start over. And that is Hayuk in general. There's some more things that uh, kind of left out rule-wise, but that's the gist of how Hayuk plays out. At the end of the game, you'll have one more scoring, final scoring, based on uh, the uh, largest family per each city block. So up here is kind of an interesting one because what happened here was we each had a family of two. So then it comes to tiebreaker, which is the uh, level, you know, two-story houses. So blue only had one two-story house, but purple, you'll see here, both of his were actually two-story. So purple wins the, the largest family. Uh, for this city block and scores one point for each house of that family, so it gets two points. The largest block, or the larger block over here, um, looking at the largest family, we have three, two, one, one, and four. So this uh, blue would get four points, one, two, three, four, for the largest family for that block. And that's it for the advanced game. Um, you add in, uh, you know, villagers and the cattle and everything like that. You're going to have more end scoring. You're going to count the cattle and villagers as well. But uh, and throughout the game, there's that. In the shaman, um, in the advanced game, uh, you can, that ends up being moved around and uh, placed in one of the houses, and that basically uh, saves that block from, uh, you know, catastrophe. Um, Anyway, lots and lots of fun. Um, this is two to five players once again, and uh, it takes, I mean, again, it's going to vary with the amount of players. Um, I think once everyone knew what was going on and everything, it would probably play somewhere between hour, hour and a half, probably. Um, but uh, really, really enjoy the... Uh, decisions as far as uh, one of the interesting things uh, that I didn't mention yet as far as scoring each of these blocks I, as I mentioned earlier you know legal move you can go ahead and start a new block at any time but let's say you know blues over here and they're starting a new block they have uh, you know some shrine and they got oven here this block will not score, be eligible for, uh, not score, but would not be eligible for gaining any of the aspect cards over there until there is more than one uh, player in this block. So I need purple to come in and put a house over here. Um, and so that's kind of an interesting aspect to it as well because purple could just not add to that city block but if he starts you know his own am I gonna add to it really you need to uh, hop on board when someone builds a new uh, city block you really do want to kind of join in on that because each of these city blocks scores for a majority of each of these uh, different things uh, let it be basic game or medium so the more blocks that you're involved in the more opportunities that you have for points uh, the more opportunities that you have for families, uh, which allows you to play more aspect cards. Um, anyway, it's in return, play more aspect cards, you can build more things and get more aspect cards to score points. So lots of lots of uh, good solid gameplay mechanics in this. Um, the catastrophe cards, I, I think the theme comes through pretty well actually with all of this and I think there's a lot of variety in how you actually play the game uh, and so uh, it's just and coming full circle again just the the quality of the components and everything is fantastic the artwork um, I think you can really make it uh, you know a short you can play a short game once you have all the components uh, 
laid out differently, you know, separated with baggies or something, the setup should be fairly quick if you keep everything separate. Uh, but uh, really enjoyed Hoyoke. Um, go ahead and check out the uh, expansion on Kickstarter now. Uh, if it's ended by then, uh, you know, go to uh, Mage Company's website. I'm sure we'll be able to get a hold of that. And uh, thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time. Uh, and I hope you, uh, if you pick this up, you enjoy it as much as I do, and we'll see you later.